It says I'm following you. equity, inclusion, and engagement facilitator. I also work in the space of race and racism, working with clients. And I'm an engagement and empowerment coach. And I, I come to this show with 35 years in corporate America and a bunch of formal and informal learning experiences and a really eclectic life. Um, and, and I think that's one of the things my guest and I have in common today. We've done a little bit of everything and we are just bring these conversations and information with you because I want to, my hope is that I'm going to challenge you and inspire you to step into a bigger you, right? So my desire is that you're going to listen to these podcasts and you're going to get excited and encouraged in such a way that you want to experiment with your own life and find all of the paths to empowerment that work for you. I truly believe that empowered people empower people. And the woman you're about to meet is Charlotte Van Horn. And I'm just clapping myself because I'm so happy. So Charlotte, I, I was trying to think of how to describe her and I didn't really have to think. Of, the first word that came to mind was renegade. Um, she's a renegade. She's a trailblazer. She truly is a force of nature, um, but she's a source of energy also. She's a, a fabulous source of energy. Um, she's founder of Black Expats in Panama. She's also the owner and founder of a, a company called Locks Forever. Um, she helped people get their natural hair together, but she also helped people open up their businesses to do that. And she's also a coach for other entrepreneurs. Who yes. That's going to work for them. Um, I, I don't even know where to start with you. I don't even know where to start with you. I, I'm going to just ask you to talk about where you're living now and how you ended up in Panama. So you, you said, ask me, what did you say, Lisa? Tell people, tell people how you ended up in Panama. Okay. Well, thank you so much for inviting me on the show. You know, you are just my shero, and um, I have just loved and admired you forever. I mean, since the 80s. And so when it comes to queens and when it comes to renegades, I say it takes one to know one, baby. Um <laughs> But how I got to Panama from little old Glassboro, New Jersey, was I met a man in Mississippi. Biloxi, Mississippi is where I met my husband, Alfredo. And Alfredo is a, um, a Panamanian who was in the military at Keystone uh, Air Force Base. And when I moved out to uh, Mississippi from New Jersey to be with my bestest friend in the whole wide world, Karen Williams, I ended up meeting him and falling in love and like, you know, seeing the world. I, I love, and I love it. And we're gonna talk more about seeing the world. And I'm just gonna put everybody on notice now. If you are on here and you don't have a passport, by the end of this show, you should want to go get your passport. Like yes. we should be, you should be typing or messaging somebody to say, where do I need to go to fill out? My right. right. So um, let's start with locks forever. I want to start with locks forever because for me, I felt like when you found that it was like this anchor and I started seeing things happening for other women when you started Locks Forever. So t tell us how that company came about. Well, Locks Forever came about because um, when my husband decided, when me and my husband decided that we were going to move to Panama when it was time for um, retirement, I had been an admin all my life. And I knew that I would not be able to continue that work in Panama because I'm not bilingual, okay? And so 
Um, one time when I was in Panama, I just happened to notice that I think that the sisters could really use um, uh, sister locks here because of the the humid uh, climate and because of the rain and trying to keep your natural all together was definitely a challenge for some of them. And not only that, back then, you know, this is like mm, like early to mid 2000s. They didn't have the products, so they didn't really have the good products to even get a good straight perm going on. And um, actually, the Holy Spirit just told me that, you know what? They may not be ready for sister locks today, but by the time you're ready to retire, they might be. Go learn how to do sister locks. I have been wearing the um, sister locks for years already. I think I had gotten them in 2005. And this was probably around when I made that this, this decision. It was around 2011. Um, so that's how that came about. Um, and I just figured I would work that. I would plan my work and work my plan with that and build it up a little bit so that when I came to Panama, I would have a way to earn money. And um, the business within five years retired me. You know what? And I, and I want you to take a minute and explain what Sister Locks is. I don't want to assume that everybody that hears okay. this um, knows what Sister Locks is. So please tell us about Sister Locks and what, what it actually Okay, um, sister locks is um, it's they're they're interlocks that are done with a specific in a specific grid, um, certain sizes. Um, they were the sister lock brand was created by Joanne Cornwell in um, San Diego, California. And when you see the women, like okay, here we go, um, Supreme Court Justice Katanji. Katanji Brown, right, Jackson. She is sister locks. She has sister locks. And so that's what sister locks are. They're, they're locks, but they're very small. They're fine, very small and fine, but they're very strong. And they allow you a lot of flexibility with regard to styling. Definitely. That is one of the biggest benefits. They allow you a lot of flexibility with regard to styling. Yeah, and, and so much better for our hair. Yes, Yes, best best thing I ever did for my in my in my for my hair. Absolutely. Some of the results that you've gotten putting sister locks in women's hair. Well, what happens is a lot of times the women that come for sister locks are typically, you know, 40 years old, got their own money, know what they want. Um, a lot of them at that point are getting to the point where their hair is thinning a little bit. And, you know, some of them that wake up in time say, you know what, maybe I don't need another weave, another braid, no more stress and tension on my hair because things are happening. You know, some people on blood pressure medicine, oh my God, they like have the balding. And what happens is when you get the sister locks, First of all, my husband said it was a ministry because you can see people come in one way and leave another. Sister locks are very powerful, very liberating um, hair system. And it's your own system and it, hair and it grows a lot. And so it, it helps with your confidence. It helps you retain your hair because our hair is um, curly. We brush it. We comb it. And a lot of it ends up on the floor. Um, I sat in on a dermatologist talking one time and she said pretty much our hair grows and breaks almost the same rate. And But when your hair sheds in a lock, it stays in the lock. And that's why locks get so long. And that's why I think that basically for um, textured uh, curly hair, I think we're meant. These, I think that locks are, we are meant for locks. You know, Bill down there hitting that heart button and every other button down there because she's wearing locks and she is loving this conversation. And I and I have to look at hers again because I, if I remember correctly, hers are pretty long now. And that's one of the mm -hmm. things that I noticed with a lot of your clients. I would see the before and after, yes. and you can see how fast our hair actually grows and yes. off the length that it can get to. And it's like, yeah. you know, when I lived in Brooklyn, I would see guys with, with locks, mm -hmm. right? you know, not as micro as what you were doing, but mm -hmm. people were surprised that men, black men could have hair down to their behind. And yeah. it would be these beautiful uniform um, locks all the way down that were just so healthy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have never seen it. So I really wanted you to explain it. So if you are listening to this show or watching- Lisa, I just want to say you're having a little bit audio issues. 
coming in. I don't know if you realize it's a little bit of screeching and you're kind of coming in and out volume wise. I know we're going to have a good conversation and I, I don't want it to be this, this distorted. I, I figured you can't hear it. I, I am not hearing it, but let me see if I can switch devices here while we're, while we're on here. Um, and I, I'm going to continue to tell people. Okay. And well, I, while she's doing that, I would just say that if you see men with the small locks, they might be brother locks, you know, you could, because they do have, we do have brother locks as well. Um, and brother locks is pretty much the same as sister locks, but it, um, but they're larger because they don't need the styling. They don't need the styleability that um, we need uh, as women. So typically when you have sister locks, the, the grid is designed that the front and the locks are smaller and it gives you a, a fuller um, effect. And then the, the locks in the back can be a little bit um, bigger. The average number of um, sister locks on an establishment is 400. You know, not the number, but the average number. So... That's um that that's the thing about sister locks as well. And um Lisa, you back, mama? Yeah, are you still getting feedback? Can you hear me? I can hear you, I just can't see you. Now I can see you. Let me see. So are you saying that the average you're getting four hundred locks on a scalp? An average. average. See, sometimes it's more. Sometimes sometimes it's more, sometimes it's a little bit less. Um, but yes, yes, it's a lot. It's a lot of locks and it's a very intricate work. And so people talk about how expensive it is. Um, and prices vary, you know, you don't have to, you know, you're not locked in on any particular price. People can charge what they want for those services, but it is a lot of work. And if you're going to get sister locks, I highly recommend that you do it before your natural is 12 inches. Uh, yes, you definitely want to get it while your hair is still kind of short to save time and money. Okay. Yes. Okay, I have a question. Mine's too short. Mine is Yours is, you pull it out, you got about four inches? Yep. No, you, that's, a good, that's a good length. And you know, you will look adorable with some sister locks. I had decided a while ago that's probably the only way I would actually let my hair grow out is if I came to you and got the, uh, got the sister locks put in because letting it grow out like this, the damage, I can't take the damage. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and not unless I had my big Angela, uh, Angela Davis Afro, then I was good. So <laughs> we, were, we were trying to figure out today when we met, and I think we narrowed it down to 1987. Yes. 1987. Um, before I get into some of the other stuff, because I want people to understand, we just came through this pandemic. And when you hear about some of the things that Charlotte has done in the midst of a pandemic, you're going to be questioning, what did I do during this pandemic? I could have done more, but it's not, and it's not too late. But could you go back to the 80s and 90s and just share some of your background and what some of your life experiences have been like? Because I want people to understand um, just your growth, your experience, and how your faith has developed. Okay. Well, back when I was saying to uh, Lisa earlier, you know, I mean, I, I was just, I was such a, a, a closet person. I was such a, you know, but I, 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 was a, I was a terrible drug addict when I met her. And she didn't even know. Um, I think that we were both temping in um, Princeton. And um, that's when I met her. And I just can remember she was just so beautiful. And she was Miss New Jersey, USA. And she signed her little picture for my babies, um, my babies, um, the Chardé. Um, But, you know, during that time, you know, life was a little bit turbulent. And I always say that for me, all the decisions in my life have been made by me. I do not have the time or the wherewithal to give people credit for some of the things that I've accomplished in my life. At the same token, I'm not giving you credit for my mess ups. Okay, so I have made a lot of mistakes um, in my life. Um, praise God, like around 93, 
I left the I left New Jersey because I just figured I had nothing to lose. And really, honestly, a lot of the the things that I was going through had to do with the death of my mother. You know, my mom died in 1987. So when I met Lisa, you know, my mom my mom died when I was at a squib. I remember the day. So yes, uh, my mother died. And I guess back then we really didn't talk about, you know, self-help, emotional well-being or grieving or anything, you know. Um, and it really just it, it hit me hard. You know, it hit all my family members hard and we all dealt with it in different ways. But anyway, my way was to overuse drugs. OK. And but I always kept a job and, you know, I had my little pride about myself. So nobody really knew. So anyway, I was just dealing with a lot internally. And then my girlfriend said, um, she kept saying, why don't you move to Mississippi? And I'm like, girl, I ain't moving no Mississippi. They be done hung me. I'd be some strange fruit up in Mississippi with my big old Jersey mouth, right? And one day I just said, I have nothing to lose. And I got on that Amtrak train with my six-year-old in tow with a, um, uh, a foot locker from Kmart. Um, two foot lockers, I think. Oh, no, well, one foot locker from Kmart. And I went from uh, Delaware, I caught the train from Delaware to uh, Mississippi, and I started my life all over again. And when I got to Mississippi, um, in Biloxi, there's like two main roads. There's Beach Road and there's Pass Road. And Beach Road, uh, and like its name, went along the beach. And Pass Road went along the, the swamp or, you know, you know what I mean, that... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but when I hit Beach Road, oh my goodness, it was my first real spiritual experience. And I just had this, oh God, I try to talk about it a lot because I get emotional. I just had this feeling of peace um, come over me. And it was like the Holy Spirit was saying, you're going to be okay. And that was in September of 1993. And I met my husband in November of 1993. And my husband is Panamanian. And that's how my trek, even though I didn't know it then, ended up taking me to, um, to, to Panama. So that was kind of like how, how, what happened in the nineties. Um, and then, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I just went went through things and, you know, got some stuff together. I had horrible credit, um, but I wanted to change my life. And and I did. And I'm grateful. I am. I am so grateful. I'm grateful that God sent me the man that he did, because, you know, he sent me a man who if I ever if he ever knew I thought about doing drugs, you know, he would have been like, ah, ah, you know, my husband has never touched a drug in his life. And if you coming from somebody from that environment, your best husband is going to be the one that never introduced that something like that into your life again. So, um, you know, we were we went through things and um, but we managed to stay together. And and I think to skip to the the COVID part, and we can come back if you want. Yeah, I just yeah, don't want to ramble. Yeah, ramble along. We want to get to COVID. I know we're going to get to COVID because there, there's, look, there's so much, we talked today about feeling guilty that yes. so much good stuff has happened during COVID, right? Mm -hmm. And it's not that we didn't experience or have people in our lives that didn't experience problems because of it, but COVID wasn't necessarily a huge negative thing for everybody in, in the way that people think it was. Yes. Um, talk, talk to me about your first trip to Panama. OK, my first trip to Panama was in 2004 and um, it was I got my passport for the first time. And me and my daughter and my husband came um, to Panama. And I had been hearing these, you know, stories about Panama for all these years from him. And he was just kind of one of them. He told them Bill Cosby stories like, you know, like Bill Cosby might tell a story. I had to walk 10 miles and, you know, you lazy. I had to walk 10 miles in the snow to get to school. I felt like his stories were kind of like that. Like it was jungle uphill I both ways. Mean, Yes. OK. And um, so when I got here, I was surprised at how developed um, and sophisticated Panama was. I was very, very surprised um, by that. And I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed, you know, meeting his family. But, you know, I didn't at any point say to myself, oh, I think I'd like to live there one day. Mm -mm, mm -hmm. Not ever. And and really, honestly, when I met him, he said to me, he said, 
when I retire, he was in the Air Force, and that's why I met him in, in Biloxi. He was stationed there. And he said, when I retire, I like, he says, I'm going to retire in Panama. I was like, oh, that's nice. Because I was thinking to myself, ain't nobody going to Panama. You know, I said, look, ain't nowhere in the world better than the USA. And I'm just telling you like it is. That is what I believed wholeheartedly. Why would anyone want to go anywhere else? You know, the USA is the best that there is. You know, that was my thinking back in 1993. Obviously, I changed my mind since then. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. So you go to Panama in 2004. Mm -hmm. Are you going every year after that? Um, maybe not every year, you know, but got to be pretty regular. We would go maybe, yeah, maybe every once a year or once every other year. And then it just got to be a little boring because it was like, you know, we had family here and we would come and we would spend time with the family. But I mean, after you've seen the canal and, you know, you've done other couple little touristy things, it's like, you know, what's next? You know, I just was spending a lot of time in the casino across from the from the hotel. So it really wasn't a vacation anymore. But at some point, um, my husband mentioned again that, you know, about retiring there. And and I said, let's look around. And we went and we came to the place where I'm sitting right now. We okay. came. And it was a new development. This house was dirt. And we came, I swear to you, Lisa, um, we saw the plans. We saw the model home. And I remember my husband standing in the model home, looking out the windows in the stairwell. And I took a picture of him because I knew something told me in my knower that we were going to move here. And so I and and to and to tell you the truth, we put a deposit on a house like that day, or I think the next day before we left, we put a deposit on a house. Okay, now what year was that? That was I think it was like December. It was 2011, maybe 2011, because our house got finished around in 2012, in November of 2012, and it took about a year. So at that point, you 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 were you were laying roots. I was I was locked in. I you could see roots. it. I could see it. And that's the thing. You know, if we don't have the exposure, like had I never traveled outside of the country, had I never gotten my passport, mm -hmm. let's count the many times we say You're passport. Say passport. <laughs> <laughs> so had I not gotten my passport, I would have never been able to experience something different than the United States. Mm -hmm. And I could see it as a possibility. Mm -hmm. So you got the you got locks forever. Because mm -hmm. I remember seeing you going back and forth. I was tracking you. I told I had to tell Charlotte today. I said at some point I felt like I was stalking her <laughs> online. Because I, I'm just like eavesdropping on her entire life every bit because I'm seeing you go back and forth to Panama and I'm seeing locks forever. I'm seeing you doing it in Virginia. I'm seeing you with it in Panama. I'm seeing other women opening up businesses. Yes. And now you're helping people that aren't even doing locks forever. It's just people that want to have a business, mostly women, because we have that in common too. Yes. Um, how did your, how was it running a business in Panama? Well, the, the business in Panama actually started in 2017. Um, what we did was we expanded our home and um, here I could not legally be a cosmetologist. Um, Panama protects the jobs for their own people. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of things in Panama that you cannot do if you're not Panamanian born. However, comma, the, the natural um, hair system is still very much a gray area and you can um, perform. And it was just a matter of educating people about, you know, lo sister locks because Panama didn't know anything about them. So, you know, here I come, you know, this foreigner with this pricey hairdo. And of course, I, I mean, I had to make up my own pricing. Um, and I just, to make it easy, I just cut everything in half. You know, whatever I was talking okay. in the United States, I just cut it in half because this was Panama and the economics were different, you know. But I didn't have anything, I didn't have any guideline 
So I just had to make that up. But, you know, I connected with a group um, called SAMAP, which is like the Society of, of Amigos for Afro Antillian um, Panamanians. And um, they they run the West Indian uh, Museum here in, in Panama. And I connected with them. They allowed me to talk to their group and, you know, just started doing little things online and um, and, and eventually that's how I ended up starting Black Expats in Panama. Yes. Talk about Black yes. Expats in Panama. Before you do, I want everybody to notice my little uh, ticker tape that's running here, our little fortune cookie. You're going to see all the ways that you can connect with Charlotte Van Horn. So you're going to see Black Expats in Panama.net, her website. Her Instagram is at locks forever. That's locks, the number four and ever. Her mm -hmm. YouTube is YouTube slash uh, the youtube.com slash black expats in Panama. And mm -hmm. you can go to the website and become a member for as little as $10 mm -hmm. and stay connected to everything that's going on. And we're going to yeah. get to uh, how you can get to Panama a little bit later, but you, right. can, you can join us and come to Panama because I'm coming soon. Good. So, I can't so, wait. So, so you're, you're in Panama. You've got this business in 2017. We haven't even hit the pandemic yet. Right. How long are you still running Locks Forever there? Are you still doing Locks Forever? I actually, because of Black expats in Panama, I have had to actually stop taking new clients at this time here in Panama. But I think that with between 2017 and now, you know, with the gear off for the pandemic, um, basically, I was seeing about 10 clients. Mm -hmm. um, what I did was I had an apprentice and I taught her how to do interlocking. I cannot teach her how to do sister locks. Sister locks is a trademark right. that Dr. Joanne Cornwell owns. And the only way you can say you're doing sister locks is if you go through sister locks corporation. Mm -hmm. However, it's very similar. It's interlocking. Okay. So I taught her to do interlocking. And for, for one thing, she somebody need to do my hair. Right. <laughs> I was going to ask about that. <laughs> yes, so she does my hair. Um, she's an amazing young lady. Um, I gave her all my salon equipment when I moved into when I moved, when I shipped things from the states and and brought my my um, main station here. I gave her the one that I had assembled while I was in um, here in Panama. She's opened up her little shop. You know, she's doing excellent. She does amazing work. And um, so basically, I am open to doing establishments here, and then I turn the maintenance over um, to Tirsa. Um, and Tirsa, she cannot establish sister locks, but she can maintain them maintain through the them. Okay. system. So, yeah, this is, and, and again, it's just a testament to the fact that you are such a mentor and supporter to other entrepreneurs. Because mm -hmm. you've just given her a whole new opportunity for a different kind of life, running her own business. Yes. Running her own business. So tell everybody what Black Expats uh, in Panama is, how you got started, and what's okay. so fabulous about it. Well, um, Black Expats in Panama got started because... First of all, I was looking as I was, you know, planning to build this business here in Panama. I knew that I knew who my client base would be. My client base would typically be um, retirees, people that understood like the, the average Panamanian um, income would not allow them to have uh, to afford sister locks. OK, even at slashing at a half, there just wouldn't be something they wouldn't be my target. But. I kept looking on Facebook for this market and I was, I kept looking for black expats in Panama. And then I kept coming back and looking for it as if it was going to be there where it wasn't, you know, there was Yesterday. nothing, nothing. <laughs> there was nothing black Panama together on Facebook. And finally one day I said, you know what, build it. And I created a group called Black Expats in Panama. And I wasn't sure how that was going to go. So I created a sister page. The page is public. The group is private. Mm -hmm. And um, and that turned out to be a very good idea. 
Um, but so I started the Black Expats in Panama and over time, you know, I put a little stuff out there here and there, talk about sister locks, you know, met a couple sisters and, you know, but it was growing slowly, but that is how, that's how real life is. And when you're building a business, people expect to put it out there and bam, you know, it's like, that's it. No, that, that's not. You build it one person at a time. And that's what was happening. So I was building up this page and this group and I think between I started in May of 2019 between May of 2019 and May of 2020 we had amassed a whole 200 members right, right. between May of 2020 and May of 2022 we uh we gained 4800 more i was gonna say because you're at 5000 now we're at 5000 yeah, you're at 5000 now 5000 we had 5000 in the group and i think we have about 13 or 1400 on the page mm -hmm. on the um public page what had happened was <laughs> george floyd karen in the park covid and donald trump it's like it all collided on one that one day in May, when we watched that video of George Floyd being murdered. And that day, from that day, there was all this movement in the group. It was like all of a sudden, it was like, I mean, probably in the first week, we had 50 requests to come into the group. All of a sudden, people was looking yeah. for black expats, anything, or black, yeah. whatever. And um, it started to grow so fast. That's when I made my first video. I'm like, what do I do? You know what I mean? It was like, I, I needed to respond that people were asking questions. What is it like in Panama? What is the healthcare in Panama? You know what I mean? What is, how do they treat black people in Panama? And um, I just had to respond. Well, I and, gotta tell you, Charlotte, um, uh -huh. so Jill uh, Cox Cordova just typed in. She said, first of all, she said, what a fantastic guest. I know, I know. Um, Thank you, Jill. And she's one of the sister locks. Yeah, she's one of the sister locks. <laughs> so she was saying that when the pandemic started and the news was hitting, you know, black mm -hmm. folks getting killed, she had Googled where in the world are black people safe? And you know, Panama came up, right? Mm. Panama and Costa Rica came up and she wanted to know wow. which do you and I'm glad thank you Jill because this is something that that Charlotte and I talk about and Charlotte you talk about this a lot and when the shooting happened in Buffalo I, I remember you coming on and talking about you know where are we safe mm -hmm. and basically folks maybe it's time to start thinking about moving someplace else yeah right so yeah. talk about the um talk about the safety uh the, the talk whatever you want but give people a sense of what it really is like living in panama now that you've made this move and how safe do you feel and when you're seeing this news that we're dealing with here what's that feeling like for you now that you're living outside of the united states when once you thought who would ever want to leave here it makes me sad and you know it makes me sad and y'all gotta bear with me because sometimes you know i get emotional and one thing i do not ever deny or or tap down is my feeling. So if I feel like crying, that's what I do. And, but it makes me sad. It makes me sad that so many of us are still there. It makes me sad for the families who are needlessly um, losing loved ones. And as happy as I am, that I am in a place where I feel so safe, it makes me sad that the U.S. is in the, in the situation that it is because you know, guns, getting a gun here is not easy. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not easy. And um, the crime in Panama, I, I think I think probably, and I, I don't know for sure, but I, if I had to guess, the, the biggest crime in Panama would probably be theft. Mm -hmm. um, you know, burglaries or something like that. But, you know, all those mass shootings and mass murders in, in um in the United States, it makes me sad. It makes me happy that I'm not there. And when I kept having them, when I, cause you know, for 28, my, my husband retired here permanently in 2018. That's when he started spending a lot of time here when he retired, retired. And so after that, then I started coming, I had built up the business and I was flying twice a month. Mm -hmm. And I'm not even gonna lie, I loved it. Right. I loved 
that I just felt like so glamorous. <laughs> I just felt like such a jet setter. Like, and he was like, girl, where are you? I'm in Panama. Weren't you back in the States? Oh, gosh. It was just such a different. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I was a jet setter. And I started coming um, back and forth to Panama. But when I would get home and I would step off that plane, you could feel it. You could feel the difference. When I came into Panama and I stepped off that plane, P Panama is very mildewy sometimes. That mold hit me in my face and it was the happiest thing. I ain't even lying. And one of the guests on my show was telling me about vibrations. Mm -hmm. And that's a good way to describe it. Right. Like when you step off and you, you, and, you, and you get into the United States, there's a vibration there that is unsettling. That is unsettling. Energy. Yes, yeah. the energy. The energy is, oh, it's so, bad. So I need to tell people. So this this was so so real and resonated so powerfully with Charlotte with Charlotte that you started. How did you start bringing people or inviting people to Panama or junket junketing people? How did that actually start and when? Well, that started in COVID. That See? that takes us back to COVID because. When George Floyd happened and all these people started, you know, reaching out and asking these questions and I'm like, OK, you know, what, what do I do now? I mean, because I, I ain't no Panama expert. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to get some people together. And but I had to rise to the occasion. And what I ended up doing was connecting with the destination management company that I use here, ITA Global. We ended up becoming partners. And I said, Chris, he had done uh, other activities for me. And I said, Chris, I said, I, I got I got to get a, a relocation tour together. Mm. I got to get a relocation tour together, bring people to Panama and show them what Panama has to offer. I said, with one caveat, my relocation tour has got to be cultural as well. Mm -hmm. Because, um, I mean, we're black expats in Panama. It only makes sense that I'm bringing you to, to Panama and I'm gonna show you some cool places to live, but hello, I want you to be introduced to the black culture as well. Yes. And that is how I started. He helped me design a trip and I told him the trip had to include SMAP, the West Indian Museum. We had to have Afro Panamanian um, vendors. Um, I, I re definitely required Afro Panamanian um, tour guide. Our tour had to center on black culture um, and we had to go to Cologne. And Cologne is any bad city you can think of in the United States, any um, rough city with violence and dilapidated housing, that's Cologne. Mm -hmm. And I had white people and I had black people say, black, white and black people say to me, why would you take anyone to Cologne? And I said, because we're African-Americans and we know what this is mm -hmm. and we're not afraid. Now we're going to be safe. And I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? Right, I'm going right. to make sure of that. But we're not going to go with the hearsay. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out what's really happening in Cologne so that when we come here as residents, we have an understanding right. of the historical. We have a historical reference as opposed to just believing what we see on the TV and what people that don't know nothing about nothing have to say. Mm -hmm. And so I was the only tour. That, that comes to Cologne. And you know what? As God would have it, it is the most popular tour going. <laughs> you know, people come here to Panama. Even people that don't go on the whole tour, they they come with us on that day. That is one day that I open up to Panamanians, Everybody. to returning, uh, returning Panamanians, black expats, people that are passing through. We open that day up on the tour for them, and it is a phenomenal su success. So when did you do your first one? Do you remember the month? Girl, yeah, it was about May. <laughs> it was May of 2020. We sold out during the pandemic. That, and this is the this is something I sat in a parking lot today. I just flew. Let me tell you, my flight was supposed to be at eight fifteen mm -hmm. uh, central, and I realized yesterday I was like, "What were you thinking? You got your five fifteen, so it would have I would it would have been bumping in." 
I changed my flight to 735 this morning because I told somebody I am not missing and moving my interview with Charlotte. So Uh-oh. United needs to get me on another flight. I was on that 1K desk last, yesterday going, I need a flight out in the morning. I love so you. Today, when we were talking, I had I pulled off the highway into some parking lot somewhere. I don't know where I was. But when we started <laughs> talking about the pandemic and just the the tenacity and the nerve that you had to say, I'm doing this right now. Like, I'm, yeah. I can't let the pandemic be the thing that keeps me from doing this. So through a pandemic, basically, mm-hmm. you you started a tour company. That's more than a tour company because it's a it's a Panamanian cultural experience that you've started. They um, call me Harriet. You, you are. You're the Panamanian Harriet. <laughs> um, yeah, she's the Panamanian Harriet. Um, and you're introducing people, particularly Black Americans, to a culture that many of them didn't have a clue about and weren't even thinking about. And you have people that are relocating as a result of this. Yes, yes. How many, I asked you today, but tell the audience, how many tours are you doing a year now? We are doing, is it 10 tours? I think 10, either nine or 10 a year. We start February and we go straight through September and then we take October and November off and we do December. So I think it's nine. It's nine a year, um, and during January, we still do a tour in, in Panama, but it's Sisters in Panama, uh, which is another thing that I do. Um, that's in January. We do that, um, and then in February, we also do our residency celebration. So we celebrate people who have achieved residency. Oh, nice. Um, give them a little awards and everything, honey. Now, this is crazy because it's only 2022 people. So you need to understand she's done this in two years through a pandemic. <laughs> yeah, we still got a pandemic, right? Right, We're still pandemic. I, I, t- I say we're still in a, in a, in a damn nimic. Yes. Um, and then- <laughs> <laughs> we're still in a damn nimic. Um, what do you say to people who I mean, because it's, it's never too late, right? It's never too are late. Are they clapping? They are clapping. Oh my goodness. We have a live that audience. That's so cool. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> we have a live audience. And I'm going to be asking if you have questions in a minute. So if you have a question, um, please click the button in your lower left and uh, ask to be on stage or post somewhere so I can tell that you have a, a question for Charlotte. Um, but talk to people who are thinking about, they just have a dream. They have something that they've been They've been mulling over and mulling over and mulling over and they haven't taken a step to do it. I think that a lot of times we're just so afraid of failing. We're so afraid of failing. Um, You know, we have dreams and then we talk ourselves out of the dreams and say, well, that's too big. You know, maybe I could just do this or maybe I could just do that. And um, I think it's fear. A lot of times it's just it's just fear. But and I don't know how to say it other than to say, just just do it. I mean, it sounds like so cliche, but take a step towards it. Okay, if you're methodical, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Start your research. You know, if you've ever thought about relocating, get a passport. Um, Yeah, that's two. Uh, (laughs) Passports are us. That is where you can start. That is where you can start. Just start. Just start. And you know something? It's like sometimes the universe is just waiting for you to start. If I could tell you the doors that have opened for me since I just just started, just start, just start and, and concentrate on being the very best that you can at whatever you're doing. If that means doing a little research, you know, taking a class, you know, position yourself, but don't let all of that preparation keep you in one place. Mm -hmm. Don't do it. All of you go to my YouTube channel. Listen, if there's anybody out there that can do me some videos, you know, at a reasonable price, y'all videographers is expensive. Expensive. And I get it because it's it's a lot of work. But guess what? I can't wait till I'm in the straight up position to hire a videographer. Mm-hmm. I got to work with what I'm working with. Right, right. Okay. And, and every time I put out a video, I sell a tour. See? It is like clockwork, you know, so take one step. 
And then another door will open or you get to take another another step. Just don't be afraid to take that step. So you so know, and, and 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 don't don't if there's somebody in your life that is a naysayer, uh oh, just no. wait. Just just what just wait. Don't tell them, don't tell them while you're while your dream is still in the infant stages, because your dream and your your confidence in that dream is not is not strong enough sometimes to sustain and um, be able to, to just keep moving forward when somebody is so negative mm-hmm. towards your dream. Listen, you got to guard it. You got to guard your dreams you do. from dream you do killers. Like a baby. You got to yeah. protect it like a baby. Yeah. And some of them aren't some of them aren't trying to be intentional about killing your dream. But it's like you were saying, they're so afraid of living theirs, they can't fathom you living yours. No. And and they, some of it is protective. They don't they don't want to see you fail and see no. you hurt. So they think they're protecting you, but you that's a good thing. Don't they don't need to know yet. Not yet. <laughs> you Not tell yet. them, you tell them when you when they see you on Facebook and you're in Panama, yes. that's when they'll know. That's when a lot of people know. That's when a lot of people know. But let me tell you what else, what else on a more even practical note. Listen, I thank God for the idea of black expats in Panama that was born, you know, basically it it, it came alive during, during COVID. But let me tell you something. People tried to steal it. When they see, when they seen that, that page just growing like Mm -hmm. crazy, you know what? People tried to steal it. So you know what your girl did? Trademark. That's right. You she, go right she, she down to four, the USPTO, baby. You have four international trademarks? I have one international trademark and four trademarks. Trademark. Okay. Yes, I have one international trademark. Yep. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, mine is I, around here somewhere. I, th- I don't it, think I've hung it up yet. And I got three, three pending right now. That's right. And folks, it's not that expensive. Mm-hmm. And if you it's need not. to get an attorney to do it, then pay the attorney because mm-hmm. that is one. I think Steve Harvey actually has a video out talking about making sure you own your ideas before you share them with people. Yes, absolutely. Um, and he talks about Sometimes you don't know how good an idea is going to be. Right. So you still see people trying to steal it. Yeah. And so the first thing that you can do just to get off of for a second on trademarks is, mm-hmm. you know, put a TM on it. Yep. That's intent. And for now, you can just do, just put a TM on it. You can, you can take care of all the stuff later. When you see a TM, that could be either I filed for it, I intend to file for it. Now, when you see the R, that means it's a done deal. It's a registered, registered, uh, trademark. registered trademark. Don't come for me. Another tip about trademarks is, um, for me, I've worked in legal office all my life. Right. Well, I worked in medical when I met you, but for the most part, I worked in legal offices. And the last 10 years of my career, I worked patents, patent uh, office. Well, you know, there was a there was some really, really, really good um, trademark legal assistance there. It was one in particular. I said, look, girl, I need a trademark. And I said, I know you can do it for me because I was a legal assistant. I was a a legal secretary. I know who do certain work. Mm -hmm. And we may not be able to sign off on stuff, but assistants get it all together. They They probably know how to get it all together better than the attorney, right? Mm -hmm. So I told her, I said, you can do this. I said, but I need you to have a business. And so you start a business, send me an invoice, and I want you to, to help me get this trademark. She started her business business because she was still working there as a trademark assistant. She started her business so that she could help me with this, um, with this trademark. Okay. That's let me another you, person you didn't help start a business. Baby, let me tell you, she got contracts with Verizon. She ended up leaving the firm. She is doing <laughs> a big thing. She is still on her own today. Well, I may be getting her information because all of mine I have filed yes. myself. So and it's know, a lot we, less expensive. Yeah. We you been, have signed for things everything. because she's not an attorney. But let me tell you something. She put that thing together. I haven't had, she's done every one of my trademarks. I haven't had any issues yeah. whatsoever. Well, you know what? We started off temping together and yes. both of us ended up being legal secretaries. Yep. And we both ended yep. up working at patent and trademark law firms because I worked in one in D.C. And wow. you were, I think, in one in Jersey. When were you in D.C.? Oh, my God. See, that's a whole nother conversation. Oh, <laughs> that's where I yep. spent most of my career. I, I was yeah. in 
He from 98. Okay. We, well, you, yeah, we're going to have to talk because we might have wow. been working around the corner from each other. Yeah. Um, so wait, so, the, so that was a free tip, everybody. If you have an idea, if you think it might kind of almost be a little bit good. Put a ring on it. But yeah, put a, put a TM ring on it. <laughs> Get that trademark so that you own it and be careful. That's another one of those things. Don't start yeah. telling everybody because it might not be the person you tell. It'll mm -hmm. be the person they tell. Yes. And you'll go look up something and find out that your your really good idea has already been trademarked and, it, yes. and it's too late for you. So tell people what they're going to experience if they go to your website, because I really want people to go to black expats dot black expats in Panama dot net. N -E yes. dot black, net. Black, if you go to black expats in Panama dot net, you can hit the join the community button in the front to see our black expats panama.com and so it's two websites right now but they're they're both linked but the the platform the dot com is the what we call bcp it's the beep community platform the beep community platform we work with a black owned business out of um denver colorado and um they designed this platform for us it is just like facebook but not facebook it has where you can advertise your business to our members um you can have we have classifieds we have groups um, we have like uh, special discounts that our members can have. And so we started a membership. So we're transitioning from the Facebook platform because so many people don't want to be on Facebook. You know, so many people don't really want to be on social media. So to tell you the truth, the other reason that we did it was, again, you build these groups from scratch. From, from one person, you know, I spend no less than nine or 10 hours online a day managing these groups and my business and everything like that. But you have people that come to the group Mm -hmm. And say, build my business. Like, wow, you got 5,000 people yeah, here yeah. waiting to give me money. No, that's not what we're doing anymore. Okay. So the group has had to evolve over time. And so now what I have created is an opportunity for businesses to, to market themselves to our platform in a way that's honorable and respectful to, to black expats in Panama, because you have people who have literally built their businesses on this group and have never said, hey girl, thanks, or nothing. So right. there was a lot of reasons that we needed to do um, some different things, but the, 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 the group is, um, that page is multifaceted and we are extremely proud of it. Um, going forward, there are going to be like intense videos and information similar to the one that we did um, just last night, That's the right. like, Blacks at 101 Zoom that we did, that you won't be able to get on our other platforms. So there'll be exclusive materials and um, you'll have access to our exclusive vendors and, um, and to build your groups and to build your business. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a community where we can all you know, get together. We can all build it because members can have their businesses too. Right. right. Well, it's, it's, it, it is a, such an amazing. Yeah. I'm loving um, that platform. Thing. Um, talk about Blacksit because you just mentioned Blacksit. I don't have that <laughs> running, but tell them what okay. Blacksit is and what your show is about on Blacksit. Well, Blacksit, um, Blacksit is not something that, that I own. Blacksit has had different meanings over the years. Um, and Blacksit is sometimes, you know, correlates with Brexit, you know, kind of thing. But actually what Blacksit means um, nowadays is Black people exiting. And so there is a radio station out of Costa Rica called uh, Blacksit Radio on BlacksitRadio.com. And they reached out to me to host a show about Panama. So every Sunday I host a show about my journey from little old Glassboro, New Jersey to Panama City, Panama, and right there on BlacksitRadio.com every Sunday at... Um, 2 p.m. Costa Rica time. Okay. Um, I do I do that. And there are hosts from all over the world. And I have an exclusive agreement for Panama. You know. So folks, you need to just let that sink in. This is a this is a this is a sister girl from Glassboro, New Jersey. The borough. From the borough. From the borough. 
Because <laughs> I tell people we Jersey girls. This is a, That's we, right. we're both Jersey girls. Um, right. Who is who has made a name for herself in Panama, sharing Panamanian culture with the rest of the world. Mm -hmm. And this has really kicked off and taken off and blown up in the last two years while we have been sitting and living and moving around in a pandemic. Mm -hmm. And so, I, 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 like I said, I, I was so excited to talk to you just because you're so inspiring to me. It, it is, it's your story and your, your whole, the way you live is just so inspiring to me and it's encouraging, it's motivating. There have been days when I will click on your Facebook and just hit one of your videos because I'm just feeling off. And mm -hmm. it just reminds me, you're good, just keep moving. Or you're good, take a nap. Or you're good, go sit on the roof in the sun and have a smoothie, but you're yeah. good. You're good. And, and then get back on whatever that idea was because you have just stayed true to the ideas that have come to you. You have honored them and you haven't allowed fear to immobilize you. Thank you. you have because not it's, not as that, it's not as though it doesn't exist. Right. Even before coming on here, people think that, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a people person, you know, most of the time. I like who I like, you know. Um, but I'm not. People think that this is so easy. And it's not. It's just... It's just that it's what I'm going to do. Right. You know, it's, it's what I'm going to do. You got to get yourself out of the habit of saying no. Yeah. When I was doing stand-up comedy, it was like, once it took off, um, it was like, oh my goodness, I was getting offers like every week, twice a week for to come and do stand-up comedy. Stand-up comedy is stressful, yeah. you know? It is so stressful, right? Oh my gosh, it is something else. And it's like... I it, it was it was hard and I, I would get scared and I would get nervous and I'm like, oh, and I had this thing where I could not repeat jokes. The, having a set was just something that I didn't do. Okay. I got a book full of jokes. Right. Every time I had a performance, I would write all new, new jokes. jokes. For their performance, because I felt like fake. You had to <laughs> like, do the old one. That, them look, I was like, them jokes was for them other people. <laughs> and it just became stressful. But I recognized that it was a blessing that people wanted me to share with them. I went the first year, the first year that I was a stand up comedian, I competed in a nephew Tommy 50 comic standing in mm -hmm. South um, Carolina. And by within the first year, people was paying me $250 an hour to do stand up. They was paying me so much money to do stand up. I felt bad. I went and took classes. I took an improv class at DC. <laughs> I took a I took a class with Tasha Smith because I felt like I to bring them value. You know what I'm you saying? Said, Maybe I should go learn how to do this. If they Girl, don't pay me. I did. I said there are people paying me all that money, <laughs> and um, but what I realized was that when I you've got to find out what your passion is. And I love women. Mm -hmm. I love women. And I love sisters in an even more special way. I just, I love the energy that we bring. I love the authenticity that we bring. You know, earlier I said, authenticity is the new sexy baby. You understand? You understand? You see what I'm working with? Authenticity is the, the new, new sexy, sexy and peace is the new wealth. But what God showed me was that, you know, my passion is women and I noticed that when I when I did stand up for women I never had the anxiety yeah. that I have when I'm writing for a big diverse group mm -hmm. and so I said okay I'll continue to give other comedians this work that people are calling me about but I will perform for women, for women. so probably the last two years of my active career as a stand up comedian I did women's events yeah. that I absolutely love doing yeah um, and that's something, something else we have in common so I don't want anybody to be surprised when I'm doing this show from Panama in January <laughs> yes honey Cause I'm, I'm putting, just saying. Yeah, putting it out there because that's when she has her women's group in Panama. I'll yes. be coming there to talk to them. So let me know, does anyone have any comments or questions for Charlotte before I give her my last couple of questions for today? And thank everybody uh, for joining us today. And remember to tell your friends they can see this show in the replay. Um, and I will do the edits and everything and it'll be on my YouTube channel as well. But you can always come back here 
to uh, Fireside and catch all of my episodes in the replay. And I know you're going to want to share this one. So once it's up, just come back and hit the share button and you can share it with your friends. Um, let me see if anybody, I'm going to, I'm going to hit, uh, I think I had Jill right here mm-hmm. um, because I know she has been popping some comments. In there. Jill, are you there? <laughs> Jill, are you there? I am. Hello. How Hi, are you? Jill. Hi. It's, I'm so excited to, to hear you, Charlotte, and to watch you, Lisa, as always. Um, what a phenomenal conversation. Um, I was just like, I, I should have gotten popcorn because everything that, everything that you two said, I just ate up. I mean, it was just wonderful because I do have sister lock. So I was with you on that. Um, I live in, I'm from Kentucky, but I live in Georgia. Okay. And I have been, because I live in Georgia, I have been really thinking about where my family can go. Oh. And so this conversation. Uh, Georgians. A lot of people from Georgia are in Panama. Yes, I, I can imagine. I yes. can imagine. Yes. Um, so, so you gave me a lot um, to consider, and I'm definitely going to visit your website. And maybe, Lisa, yes. I'll see you you in Panama in January, too. You know Girl, what? Keep, we stay tuned for her women's time. event. Stay yes. tuned because God, what do they say? God willing and the creek don't rise. Yes. That's right. God willing, creek don't rise, baby. Yep. All right. Thank yes. you so much. Thank you, Thank- Jill. If you are if you are a queen who there was this saying and I built the, this event around it. If you are a queen who will fix another queen's crown without telling the world that it was crooked, I want you in Panama, January 2023 for the what? Sisters in Panama retreat. Yes. There, there I I need to do a flyer for an ad for that. That right there. That part. So Jill, you heard it here. My mother is all now. My mom is on here too. Mom, are you here listening? Let Hi, me mom. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can get her to speak. Can you hear us, mom? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, and we can I, hear you. I'm on the site right now. I've been <laughs> <reading>. <laughs> I've been clicking on all the links, and I'm just waiting for my daughter to get ready to move to Panama with me. Come on now. Come on. I, look, I told Charlotte today. Get it together, Miss Jacqueline. Look, we go down to Mexico because mommy has a friend who moved down there and uh, has a beautiful condo overlooking the ocean. And she was working three days a week and now she's retired completely. And I said, if we had gone to visit her before we bought this house, we might already be living outside of the U.S. But yeah. I got a special place for folks with a whole bunch of brown people. So, you know, Panama yes. is on is on that because if we sell here, we can't buy here. No, yeah. we can't. We can't afford to sell something here and turn around and buy something here. So when no. we sell here, we've got to go someplace where we can afford to live. Yes. A place where a lot of the uh, most of the people look like us. And That's the culture cool. is there. You yeah. know what I mean? It's it's yeah. something about having that rich history and that culture. And and it ain't going to be bad having another Jersey girl there to show me around. So that's, that's not right. And, 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 you know, it's the peace. It's yes. the peace of mind. I sleep different here. See? That's My sleep saying. is different here. People have come here and gotten well. People yeah. have come here and been taken off of medication. Yeah, the stress. You no, know, yeah. the stress. You know, we don't even realize it. We don't even realize the stress. It's, it's PTSD. Mm-hmm. Is it PTSD? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's all of those letters. Yeah. All yeah. of all of those. Okay. Yep. I All think right. yep. we get so conditioned to yes. live the way we live. Mm-hmm. We don't realize how much better we'd be in every sense of the word, spiritually, physically. Yes, ma'am. The word mm-hmm. to be in yes, a ma'am. where you breathe different even. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. we experience it. You know, we will go on a vacation for a week or two weeks right. and say, oh, my God. And it never occurs to people. But see, you can live like this. Yeah. 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 You can live like this. This doesn't yeah. have to be two weeks. Someone just said to me, how many trips are you going to take in the next? I said, if God willing, I'm going to be in Germany in September, Panama in January, and we're going on a cruise with family what, in May. Right. And they were like, well, that's three. I'm not counting them. I'm just counting on doing them. Yes, that's it. Keep that's playing. It. And next year I'll have Christmas in Panama. We, my mom's problem. talking about retiring we- again. So <laughs> look, as long as we have technology and airplanes, I can work from anywhere on this planet. You're right. And I mean, and, and with COVID, yes, it, it already showed up. That, that opened up a lot of opportunity yeah. 
for you know no digital nomads and yes. um, and stuff like that. But not only that, when you come here, Panama is not the most inexpensive place in Central or South America to live. However, it is a lot a inex- lot more inexpensive than California, Girl. you know, DC and places like that. Yeah. So whereas if you've been living a pretty decent life, and I, I'm pretty transparent, mm-hmm. you know, people like to say what's expensive and what's not expensive. Well, what does that mean? You know, it's like, what's in your wallet, baby? I mean, it's like, that's what's going to determine what's expensive and what's not expensive. So I like to just go ahead and throw out the numbers. So when we, we live here, and we live in three bedroom, three and a half baths. Uh, we built on a salon um, in the back. We have gated um, security, 24 hour security. We have two pools. We have an HOA. We have a fitness center, a clubhouse, a soccer field, and a tennis court. Okay. And our mortgage is $847 a month. You know what? Okay. Hey, just- look. Did anybody? Is there, wait a minute. I'm looking for the emoji that's a cartwheel. I can't, I, don't, I can't even. I'm just going to have to clap. $847 a Did month. Did everybody hear it's that? Eight- $47 for the mortgage, a hundred and some change because here you have to insure your mortgage with wait, life. I think this made me sweat. <laughs> I and we actually out. have an HOA. <laughs> so our full expenses as far as the house goes is about $1,050 a month. I can't and even. when I tell you it is the best, you know, we just happened upon the best retirement plan ever. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't even that we were so smart and that we had this all figured out when we did it, but it's all about fear. And even when it came to buying this house, I was like, I don't know. Cause I was a broker, you know, and I was just like, eh, the way it was going to play out, I couldn't see it happening, but guess what? Sometimes you just have to figure all they can say is no. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't ask, then you, you don't know. know. That's you right. know, that question that, listen, all they can say is no. And when they say no, you say, I tried. Right. And if I need to try it another I'll way. I'll try it again, right? I'll try it again later. <laughs> yes. No, I, I get it. Well, I, I look, I already knew how excited I was going to be and how wonderful it was going to be to get to talk to you. We will be talking more offline because I'm going to get details. Yes. Um, but this show is Live Empowered. So the first question I want to ask before we wrap up, I have I have a couple is when you think of the word empowered, what does that mean for you? Hmm. When I think of the word empowered, I think the first thing comes to mind is confident. Hmm. It's confident. It's just empowered is being okay with you. Being okay with you is empowered because once you're okay with you, there's not a whole lot that you can't do. You know, it's like being empowered and being okay with you. Even during COVID, I was never lonely. My husband was in um, um, Panama for nine months. We were separated for nine months. I was in my home, in my shop, all alone. I never got tired of myself. <laughs> and I never got tired of me. You know what I'm saying? And to me, that's empowered because once you're okay with you, then there's nothing that you can't do. And it's not so easy for people to take your power away from you when you're good with who you are. And we, that needs to be a a teenage girl workshop right there. Yes. Yes. So my last three question is actually three questions in one. So the first one, this is my, what went well. So I have a what went well journal that I did a couple of years ago that I'm updating right now. So the first what went well is short term, something today that went well for you. And it could be something simple. I always tell people your what went wells don't have to be big miracles. They don't have to be big dreams because they happen every day and we miss them. So mm-hmm. give us a what went well for you today. What went well for me today was that I, I got up and I, I went to work out. That went well. That went well. I mean, that's something that on a lot of days, you know, it's it's hard to do that. So when I do that, that is like, that is a plus. See, I I might have to make you my workout buddy. Just just (laughs) my accountability, just to be able to text you and go, I did it. 
Yeah, I'm actually going to do, I'm actually going to do June 21st uh, with my trainer. Uh -huh. We're going to do a live broadcast. Okay, great. And June 21st is the first day of summer, right? Right, I think so. Okay, we're on the first day of summer. So we're going to do a live broadcast for and pop it off. And uh, he's going to do it for free. And so maybe you can join us. I just might. I just, and that, yeah. it gives me time now to get the kinks out. Yes. Okay, the second what went well is what went well. If you look over the last week to two weeks, something that went well. I think over the last week or two weeks, I scored an interview uh, with someone that I was really, really wanting to have. And so that went well. I will be publishing it soon. Okay, great. So everybody stay tuned. Make sure you hit um, her Facebook page because yes. I always post everything on her Facebook page. But yes, get I'm going to post about it tomorrow and it's okay, going to be out on Sunday. So Black, uh, Black Expats in Panama on Facebook at Facebook.com. You'll mm -hmm. find her there. Mm -hmm. And then the next one, just look over your life. Look over your life and think about something that you just look back and you, you know what that that really went well that and it's going well. Honestly, that is the easiest question, and um, it's it's my daughter. You know, I just feel like Chardé is out of all of the things that I've ever done in my life that went well. You know, Chardé is my greatest greatest accomplishment and my greatest joy. Where is she now? She's in Florida. Okay. She's in Florida. She's actually, she lives in Florida with her family outside of Tampa. She is in Miami turning up with her girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> turning up with her girlfriend for her birthday. But she is so amazing. She is just my favorite thing. I just love it. Well, 36 a, years old. She's still my baby. I honey. can't believe it because I can't even believe when we were calculating back to 1987. I, I was like, and we, it, script, uh, Squib. Yes, Squib. Yes. Um, Sandra Matt was one of the managers that worked in our area that worked yes, with Squib. I'm, wow. I'm still in touch with her. Wow. I'm still in touch with her on Facebook, all of her daughters. And I'm going to see if you remember one year, I think it was as a Christmas gift. They gave us a little nail manicure set with the clippers and the tweezers. And I think I had them up until about two years ago. No, I don't remember, but I could, I don't, I don't remember, but girl, I could show you a marble um, a, a gift box. It was uh -huh. like a jewelry box, a yep. little jewelry box um, that they gave me Another that gift. I still have. That is too funny. Well, I, have, and I have a picture frame. That they quick. gave us. Yeah. It was bronze and silver that I have my mother's pictures in that I still have. See, they were always yeah. giving away little gifts. So. <laughs> they, that is so crazy. Well, I am going to be putting this in my what went well for the day and the okay. week. Um, because this, I just, I, you know, some things you can just look forward to because you already know they're just going to be like a blessing and a joy. You have been a blessing and a joy. Same and here. I'm just, I am looking forward to. I'm looking forward to January. I honest to goodness don't know how he's going to do it, but that's not for me to worry about. He's going to do it. Um, yeah. That's, I, what, that's I know he's going to do it. And we got plenty of time. Plenty of time. You know, to, to work it, out. Work it so out. We've already sold tickets. We just dropped it like a couple of days ago. Excellent. So I will be, everyone look, you can look for her on Sundays on Black Sit Radio. Go to the <laughs> website. You'll get a bunch of information. But if you get on the Facebook page, you'll stay up to date with everything and catch her when she does her videos. So yes. Jill and mom, thank you for your questions. Thank you. I see Nadine on here and Deborah. AJ, thank you everybody for joining us. I'm Dr. Lisa. You have just met Charlotte Van Horn. And hasn't your day been blessed because of that? Uh, <laughs> here on Living thank Power. you. Bye -bye. Thanks everybody.